Um, so yeah, as I was saying, we're going to be working on running exercises today. So we'll do a lot of single leg balances. So if you need a chair and anything like that for a little bit of balance, kind of have it. Um, as I said, two books as well for the hamstring stretches. Just take it as you as you can. And um, if you need to drop out of it, that's fine. This is going to be a fairly kind of strong exercise. I'll give alts for everything as well. But we're going to start in a cat cow position, so in a quadruped position, and we're going to work on our spine warm up. So if everyone wants to come join me, we'll get the hands in underneath the shoulders and knees in underneath the hips. We're going to do two to three just relatively fast, and then we're going to do two nice and slow. So really just kind of ramping up that tension on the spine. So we'll start with the tailbone. We're lifting up through the belly button, tucking the hips, riding right through that lower back, mid back, upper back, and tuck the chin. Reversing it so the tailbone goes up towards the ceiling, belly button drops down, chest drops down, scoops forward, chin up. Let's do that two more times. So tailbone under, pull up to that back, round right through the spine and tuck the chin. And then tailbone tips up, belly button down, chest down, scoops forward, chin up. And let's just do one more. Good. And then let's do two really nice and slowly now. So really focus on controlling that lower section of your spine. Trying to tuck the hips under. You can see my legs are shaking. So I'm pulling that belly button up and in. Obviously, if you have blood pressure issues or if you are pregnant, don't ramp up as much as I'm telling everyone else to ramp. But still get that nice slow curl through the spine. Tuck the chin. Let's hold here for a second or two. And then tip the tailbone up. Try and keep your chin tucked. So we're trying to create that S shape with our spine. Our back drops down, belly button towards the mat, rib cage towards the mat, chest down, really activating those muscles at the back of our spine and then chill. Nice guys, one more time, nice and slowly. Tuck the tailbone under, again, try and keep that chin up. We're creating that S shape with our spine, pulling up through the belly button, rib cage up towards the ceiling. Let's round through that upper back, tuck the chin, and hold here for a second or two. And again, tailbone tips up, creating that S shape, belly button goes down towards the mat, rib cage down towards the mat, chest scoops forward, and chin up. You can just come into a kneeling position, roll out the shoulders, roll out the wrists. We're gonna go back into the quadruped, so I'm just conscious of anyone's wrists. <clears throat> And the same again. So we're going to do some hip curls in this position. I want you to imagine you're going to go to water on your tailbone in between the shoulder blades and we don't want them uh, tipping at all. So core tight, back flat, push the heel up towards the ceiling, kick in those hamstrings and glutes. So this is hip extension, exactly. We don't want that lower back dropping down. Open the knee out to the side, knee up towards the ceiling, the foot goes down again, make sure we're not twisting through the hips and then bring that knee up in underneath our chest and hold here for a second or two. So now we're in hip flexion. We're going to come back to our starting position and then reverse it. Knee comes up underneath our chest, lift up and out to the side, knee down, ankle up, getting that twist through the leg and then scoop back into that kickback position. And again, watch this happening. The no arch backs lift up through the core, squeeze glute and hamstring, come back down. We're going to go into glute kickbacks here. So you're going to push that leg back behind you, squeeze the glute and hamstring straight run from the heel to the hip to the shoulders, back down and push, back down, push, and then back down. We're going to straighten the leg, squeeze the glute and just pulse. So this is all coming from your derriere, not from your lower back. We're going to go for 10 to 12. Again, make sure that lower back isn't arching, core is tight, squeezing the glute. I'm feeling this in my bones, so you should all be feeling it. <laughs> and then let's straighten the leg behind us and we're going to go into that calf stretch. So you're going to push that heel away from you. Try to get that big stretch all down the back of your leg. You can either stay here or push up into a downward dog and get a deeper stretch on that calf. Nice. Let's pedal onto the other foot now. And then we're going to step forward. So I've got my right foot. I'm going to step forward in between the hands, drop that knee down. And everyone knows what we're going to do. We're going to do the ankle cards. <laughs> so if you need to make a bit more space for yourself, you can. I prefer bringing that thigh in underneath. Or if you want, you can put this foot up onto a chair because that gives you more space. 
lean forward as far as you can, making sure that heel doesn't lift up off the ground. Again, you can put your hands out if you want. We're just going to hold that stretch. So early if you need to come up onto a chair if you if you want to. Perfect. Okay, we're going to drive the feet down so the toes come down into the ground. Let's dig the heel down, lift the toes up. And again, let's push the foot down. Let's dig the heel down, pull the toes up again. Remember, if this position isn't comfortable, try and elevate it up on a higher surface. Or you can just stay into a calf stretch. Last time, we're going to push the toes down into the mat, dig the heel down, lift the toes up. And then relax there. Everyone's just going to go back into their variation of the calf stretch. Again, if you need to be in a downward dog or you want to stay in this position, that's fine. Okay, we're going to change our to the side. So pushing back into that quadruped position again, we're going to do hip cutter on the other side and the whole sequence again. So dig the heel up towards the ceiling. Really think about tummy tight, back flat. And then let's lift that leg out to the side. So I'm squeezing up the side of the hip here. I'll move around so you guys can see me. We're going to push the knee up towards the ceiling, scoop all the way around again. I don't want to see this. So we're trying to keep those hips level, bring that knee in underneath the chest. Let's hold here for a second or two. And then let's bring back to our starting position and reverse it. Knee comes up towards the chest, lifts up and out to the side. Internally rotates, that knee drops down, the ankle goes back up towards the ceiling, and I scoop that leg back in around. And I'm into my kickback. Again, for some of us, our kickback may be here. So we just don't see any backs dropping down, which no one is doing, which is good. Squeeze that glute and hamstring. And then let's come back down. We're going to go into those glute kickbacks again. So back flat, push the heel. So imagine you're trying to dig that heel into the wall behind you. Squeeze the glute and hamstring. Come back in and push. Lovely. So we're thinking straight line all the way from the heel, through the hamstring, through the glute through the shoulders. Two more. Nice, and then last one. Let's try and hold, and we're gonna pulse from the glutes. So I'm squeezing that glute to lift that leg like half an inch small. Good. Okay, and we should all be feeling that in the glute. Nice, and then let's bring that foot down. We're gonna go into that half stretch. So we're just leaning back, trying to push that heel down towards the ground behind us. Again, you can stay here if you want, or we're going to push up into that single leg downward dog. Try to get that really nice deep stretch all up the back of this calf into this hamstring. Depends on where we're tight. <laughs> and then pedal onto the other foot. Nice. And then I'm going to bring my left foot up in between my hands, drop my back knee down, and I'm into my calf work on this side. Again, if you need to elevate yourself up onto the chair, if you have a chair in front of you, put your foot in front of that. If this position is very uncomfortable for anyone. Leaning forward again, you might notice there's a difference between the two sides, that's fine. Just make sure that that heel doesn't lift up off the mat at all. Good. Okay, let's try and start pushing down into the mat. Dig those toes down. As if I'm trying to indent the ball of my foot into that mat. Now dig the heel down, try and pull those toes up towards my shin. So I'm getting a big activation all up the front of my leg here. So I'm trying to actively pull myself into dorsiflexion. All the, the fancy words you probably heard the physio say, let's push the toes down into the ground again. Let's dig the heel down, pull the toes up. Nice. And then last time, push those toes down. Try and do it a little bit more tension now if you can. Really activate the calf, the back, the leg. And then pull those toes up, dig that heel down. So again, all those muscles at the front are starting to kick in. Nice, and then you can just relax here. So again, we're going to just stay in the stretch for a second or two. If anyone wants to go back into downward dog, you can. It's a bit more comfortable. 
slowly coming out of that. What we're going to do is come stand up at the top of our mat. So if anyone wants to grab their java or grab their glass of water, that's totally fine. We're going to work on toe cards first, which we actually haven't done in a while. So again, our feet are often neglected. We don't do a lot with our toes, especially if we're kind of in hard shoes or high heels all day. But we're going to try and work the toes individually. If there's no way in hell that all that you can isolate those toes like this. Just bend the knees, put place your fingertips onto all of your little fingers, and then we're going to try and lift just the big toes up. So again, if you can control your feet where you've got your little toes down and your big toe up, perfect. But if you need to kind of hop in those little toes down, you can. Okay, let's change it now. So big toe goes down, little toes all come up. So again, if you need to hold your two big toes, it's fine. Good. Little toes down, big toe up. Ooh. My foot got confused there. <laughs> big toes down, little toes up. So we're really working all those muscles on the underside of our feet as well. Little toes down, big toes up last time. Good, and then just wiggle out all the toes. You can even try and fan them if you want to see if you can go the different direction, see what feels more natural. So for me, little toes to big toes feels really easy. Big toes to little toes, not so much. <laughs> but anyway, what we're going to do is we'll face up the top of our mat again. We're reaching up towards the ceiling. I know you can't see my hands, but that's okay. You're going to fold forward. If you can get your fingertips to the mat here, brilliant. If not, just bend the knees. Your hands are here for a little bit of support. And what we're going to do is rock forward, lift the heels up, and we're onto the balls of our feet. Again, if it's uncomfortable for anyone, just go in a range that's more comfortable for you. And then we're rocking the heels back, lifting those toes up towards our shins. So I'm rocking those feet. My, my heels are down, my toes are up. I'm rocking forward. I want the ball of my foot and my heels drop. So I'm almost into a calf raise. Nice, rocking back onto my heels, trying to lift those toes up off the mat. We're gonna do that again. Rocking forward onto the ball of my toes, lifting those heels up into a calf raise. Good, try and hold here for a second or two and then push back, heels down, lift those toes up. Get a nice big stretch all down the back of the legs. Really activate those muscles at the front of the shins that we were working. And then you can just stay here in a bit of a forward fold for a right off for a second or two. So just grab the elbows and get a nice stretch on the back of the legs. We're gonna come, it's a, it's a yoga inspired class today. So we're gonna go into a sun salutation. So if anyone needs to drop the knees down in between those flows, please do, and again, just take it at your own pace. We're only going to do one, but we're going to reach up towards the ceiling, bring those feet in towards each other. So push the inner thighs towards each other, and then sit back down into a chair pose. Okay, you can have those hands out in front of having the hands overhead, it doesn't feel good. Bring the hands down, either side of your feet, push the hips up, bring to that forward fold. Breathe in, look forward, lift the head up, straighten the back. Breathe out, fold forward again and step back with one foot, step back with the other foot. Again, knees, chest and chin come to come down or you lower down in that full plank position. If you can go into upper dog, we're pushing up into an upper dog, either way, otherwise same with puppy. Let's go down and push back into downward dog. And then what we're going to do, lift that right leg up, step forward in between the hands and we're going to come up into warrior one. So I'm squeezing that back glute lifting those hands up and I'm really trying to open up the front of this hip, breathe. I'm gonna stay here for a breath or two. If you need to drop that back knee down, do. Lovely. Take a breath in, breathe out, fold forward, and step back. We're gonna lower down again, so again, knees can come down if they need to, lower down on control. Breathe in, push up. Lovely, breathe out, push back into a downward dog. Lift that left leg up, let's step forward in between the two hands. Again, you can drop that back and down if you need to. Breathe in, reach up. Reach on, keep the hips square. Reach up towards the ceiling. And let's stay here for a breath or two. Breathe in, squeeze that back leg as well. Use it to support your lower back. And then breathe out, fold forward. Step back with those two feet. Again, lower down one more time. Breathe in and breathe out, push those hips back into a downward dog. 
And then what we're going to do is just entering those feet up. So it's slightly changing the flow. We're going to walk the feet up towards our hands, whatever is comfortable for you. You can either step if you need to. And then breathe in. And we're going to lift you up. Nice. And now we're going to go into our tasty single leg work. Everyone's favourite. What we're going to do, it's called warrior three, very like a single leg ordeal. You're going to balance on that left leg. Take a breath in. Lift that right leg up. Exhale. Reach the hands forward. Right leg back. Try and hold here for a second or two. Again, if this is challenging for anyone, just drop your back foot down. Otherwise, you're trying to work on that single leg stability. Let's step back with that right foot. Don't step back quite as far as you normally would. We're going to be into a split squat now. You can either keep your front heel down or if you want to challenge yourself, come up onto the body or foot of your front foot. This is obviously going to challenge the balance a little bit more. Calf's going to be working. We're just going to do a few split squats in this position. Good. Here you go. Let's go for one more. Straighten those legs. You're going to pivot on that back foot. You probably need to toe heel the, the back foot out a little bit more. And then we're going to drop down into warrior two. So I'm bending that front knee, trying to keep my hips open. So all that hip work we've been doing should work. Reach the hands out to the side. And I'm looking over that front finger. Nice, guys. We're going to go into humble warrior now. So you're going to bring the hands behind your back. Squeeze the shoulder blades. You can either just stay here or if you're comfortable with it, build forward almost like a 45 degree angle on the inside of this calf. Drop that head down towards the mat. We're being really strong through our legs. We're going to come up out of that. Let's straighten that front leg. Now, this is where the blocks might come in handy. You're going to try and reach that left hand down towards the mat, right hand up towards the ceiling, or we're going to try pose. So I'm really getting a nice big stretch all on the inside and the back of that left leg. You can be up on your fingertips if you need to, or you can have a block there. Yeah, that seems to be doing well. We're going to bend that front knee, come up out of that, back into warrior two. Let's pivot. If you need to, you can step that back foot in a little bit. And then we're leaning forward, back into warrior one, or just stepping up to the front of the mat. And we're going to work on this hamstring of this right leg. So my right leg is forward, toes up towards the ceiling. I'm going to bend in this knee, really important. And then I'm digging that heel back. The ground is going to block me, so I'm really kicking in my hamstring. My back is flat. And we're going to do some pills and rails. So those of you who are used to the class, you will know that I'm a big fan of the old isometrics. So I'm digging that heel down into the ground, kicking in all these muscles here. And then we're going to lift up. If anyone needs to hold on to anything for balance, you can. Bring that knee up towards the chest. Let's try and straighten that right leg. Straighten it out. Ooh, quad. Come back in. Straighten again. And let's come back down one more time. Dig that heel down into the mat. Hips back, like we're doing a hamstring stretch that you might have done if you ever played soccer or any of those. But we're really trying to dig the heel down. So if that mat wasn't stopping me, I'd be pawing my heel back like that. Keep digging that heel down. We're going to do the same again. Let's straighten, stand up, bring that right knee in towards the chest. Really keep my left leg straight and let's straighten that leg. Nice, come back in. Go and let's straighten. And then let's come back down. Shake out the legs. And we're going to do it all again on the other side. So take a breath or two if you need it. Otherwise, you're balancing on that right foot. We're going to come into warrior three. So let's push that leg back, reach the hands forward into that ordeal style movement. Hold here for a second or two. Again, if you need to drop that back foot down, please do. We'll try and balance. And then let's all drop that back foot down. We're into our split squats now. So make sure your stance is comfortable. If you want, you come up on the ball of your foot of your front foot. Let's go up and down. Great, four to five reps on these. Good again. If anyone's feeling it too much through the knee of the front foot, just drop that heel down and keep the weight back a little bit. Now, let's push that back foot back behind us. Toe heel it out to the further edge of the mat. Your foot's going to be at 45 to yard on that back foot. Let's bend that front knee, drop that front knee forward and bring the hands up and try to reach back hand to the wall behind you. 
front hand to the wall in front of you. Again, we're trying to tuck the pelvis up and under, so I'm not sticking my bum out. I'm really opening up my hips. Bring the hands in behind the back, squeeze those shoulder blades together, lovely. And then let's fold forward if you're comfortable doing that. And try and drop the head down towards the mat. Taking a breath in. We're gonna come back up out of that, straighten that front leg, push the hips back to the wall behind you. And then let's try and reach that, oh, my hips clipped. Reach that right hand down to the mat and then reach the left hand up towards the ceiling. Again, if you need to be on your fingertips or on a book or a block, please do. Bending that front knee again, we're coming up out of that. Back into warrior two, let's pivot that back foot. So we're lifting that heel up, facing the hips forward. And again, if you need to just step forward, you can, otherwise we're pushing back ooh, into that single leg balance. And then coming back, both feet beside each other. Shake up the legs. Nice, reaching those hands up. And then folding forward, we're gonna come back into a downward dog. So you can come back into a downward dog, whichever way you want. If you're happy with interims, just tight rope, those feet back behind each other, get a nice big stretch to the calves. And now we're just gonna pedal those feet. Go into a bit of a heel pump. Again, if downward dog doesn't feel good, just come down into a puppy pose where your knees are on the ground. Push those hips up. What we are gonna do is right leg up towards the ceiling. Let's step forward outside the right hand. So you're going into that right leg front step, drop the left knee down. Books here, people are probably going to need the books. Just, just step right. Hands on each if you need to, or just straight down onto the mat if you can. In this position, I want to try and drive this knee away from the elbow, but not lifting the foot up off the mat. So I'm squeezing my glute here to open up the hips a bit more. Knee back in, knee out, knee in, knee out, knee in, knee out. Lovely, bring that knee back in. We're gonna push back into a hamstring stretch again. Just go as far as you can. It's gonna be different for different people. And then coming forward back into lizard or groiner stretch, depending on what you call it. Hips back into that hamstring rock. Coming forward, coming back, and coming forward. Let's push back, bring those books with you. Trust me, you're gonna need them. Now, if you are struggling, and this position, you're like, oh my God, this is enough. Stay here, don't worry about the push and pulls. If you're like, that's very comfortable, I wanna push it. What you're gonna do is hamstring pelvis and rails like we did in our standing position. So you're gonna bend that knee very slightly, try and dig that heel into the mat, and then kicking in this hamstring here. We're gonna hold for a few seconds. The wind's gonna open my door. <laughs> hold for a few seconds. And then now, if we can, straighten that leg and see if we can lift that leg up off the mat. For most of us, we're not going to be able to lift the, the leg up, but our quad and our hip flexor is going to be on fire. So let's try and hold, 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 and then come back down. Again, dig the heel down into the mat, bend that knee, kick in that hamstring. Okay, let's straighten that leg, push the hands down into the block, let's lift up. Try and straighten that leg. I'm trying to use my quad and hip flexor to peel that heel up off the mat. On the reel, guys. And then, oh, let's come down. What we're going to do, two variations of this. More advanced as the corkscrew, where I'm going to have my left hand in front in line with my right foot. And I'm going to reach back and try and take my back foot with my right hand and twist. It's called corkscrew, corkscrew stretch. If you can't do this, you're just coming back up into a half kneeling position or maybe even a standing up quad stretch. And if you need to just have a pillow in on your knee. Nice. Okay, we're gonna lower that back down. Hands to the mat. Let's push back into a downward dog. As I said, we're working a lot of, a lot of hamstrings and quads today. Head like those feet. The straight leg legs are quite advanced. So as I said, you can just stay in that um, hamstring stretch and not do the push and pulls if, if it's not feeling good. We're going to step forward with that left leg now outside the left hand. And same idea again. We're going to drive that knee away. 
come back in, get some bend, drive that knee away, come back in, drive that knee away, come back in. Last one, push out, push back in, and then we're all going to go into those hamstring rocks again. So breathing out, push those hips back, get a stretch all through this left hamstring, come forward into the groin. Breathe in, push back, and then breathe out, come forward. Breathe in, come back. Nice, guys. Lovely. Now we're all going to come back into that hamstring stretch again. As I said, if this is enough, stay here. If you can keep the leg relatively straight and you want to go a bit deeper, have those two books beside you or the blocks. Dig that front heel into the ground, bend that knee. We're kicking in this hamstring. Dig it down into the ground. So I'm activating all of this back body. I'm going to pull that heel in towards me. Keep digging. Okay, let's straighten the leg, lift. So again, you can see I'm way easier on this side for me. So when we have one side, it's easier than the other. Trying to straighten and lift that leg up off the ground and then bend the knee again, drop that heel down and let's kick in that hamstring again. Try and dig that heel down to the ground. Drop another five, four, three, two, and one. Let's straighten that leg. Use the hip flexors, push those hands into the mat of the books and let's lift that leg up. Using all that quad and hip flexor strength. Lovely guys. Unreal. Back down. Anyone's hands in strong? What we're gonna do now is bring those books out to the side. Hands back to the mat. Toe heel that left foot outside the left hand. And then twist. So I am bringing up my back leg, I'm reaching back on my left hand and we're into that corkscrew stretch again, trying to get a really nice stretch all day in the front of my right quad. Again, if this doesn't feel good, you're into that half knee variation or into a sideline variation. Lovely, let's hold, I know it's quite tough. And then let's bring that foot down, hands back down to the mat, push back up into a downward dog or a puppy pose. And then just try and relax here. Drop those heels down towards the mat. Push the hips up towards the ceiling. Okay, we're gonna bend the knees. We're all gonna come into a child's pose for a second or two, just rest. Get that breath back. And then we're gonna come forward and come into a lying position. So you're going to lie down onto the ground. If you can't lie onto the ground, I want you going back into those kickbacks that you did at the start, while everyone else is going to do their, their hamstring walkout. So we're going to lie down onto the mat, feet hip distance apart. We're going to work on trying to control our legs while our glutes and our core are engaged. So you're going to lift the hips up and we're going to try and walk the heels out into a hamstring bridge. Now watch the lower back. If you feel like your lower back is starting to kick in here, just make those steps smaller and don't go out as far. We're walking back in. So I'm squeezing my glute and hamstrings the whole time on this, digging those heels down to activate the hamstrings as I walk those heels out away from my body. Nice guys. Again, walk back in. And then last time, walk out as far as is comfortable for you. So that's gonna be different for different people. But I want you to dig the heels down, really squeeze the legs together, kick in those hamstrings we're going to hold. So again, just make sure it's not your lower back doing the work here. It should be all hamstrings, a little bit of glutes. Keep holding, breathe through it. And then let's lower those hips down, hold the knees in towards the chest. Nice work. We're going to come up into a bridge now. So if you're doing your glute kickbacks, if you're not in a supine position, just change our across to the leg. What we're going to do is let's roll that spine up. For some of you, just staying here is enough, or you can bring those hands to the mat. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you can bring the hands to your lower back, squeeze the glutes as always. And then what we're going to do is just straighten right leg up towards the ceiling, if you can. So again, I'm using my hip flexor strength here to pull me into a hamstring stretch. Lower that leg down, and then up towards the ceiling. Again, it's quite intense, so if you just want to stay in the bridge, you're more than welcome to. Let's lift up, squeezing the glutes on this. And then hold that leg up, point the heel up towards the ceiling. Nice. 
and then let's bend the leg, come back down. Let's do the same on the other side. Squeeze the glutes, lift the left leg up, straighten the left leg. Let's bring the foot down towards the mat, up towards the ceiling. Down towards the mat, up towards the ceiling. Down towards the mat, lovely. Up towards the ceiling, point with the heel. Use that hip flexor strength to get a nice stretch in the back, the hamstrings. And then bend the knee, bring that foot down to the mat and lower it back down. We're gonna hug those knees into the chest. If you're in a quadruped position, you're gonna push back into a child's pose here. And just rock the back side to side. If you have that band or strap, you're going to take it. I'm going to loop it over the left foot. If you don't have a band, what you're doing instead is just holding on to whatever you can of your left leg. So maybe it's your calf, maybe it's your thigh, but it is just a little bit easier if you do have that band. What we're going to try and do here is straighten that right leg. Just make sure it doesn't bring the lower back into an arch so you can pick which feels better. And then we're just going to hold the stretch. If you can't lie on your back, you're into that single leg forward fold. Just trying to drop your head down towards your knee. So we're going to take the band of the right hand now and keeping the left hip glued to the mat and then pull that right leg across my body. So I'm trying to get a stretch now on the outside of my left leg. So I'm not letting the hip come up and roll up. I'm just trying to really focus on getting a stretch all through my RT band, maybe the outside of my calf. If you're in that forward fold variation, you can come into that revolved var variation. We're just gonna twist and try and lift your right hand to reach over towards your left toes. Okay, let's take the band in our left hand and bring that left leg out to the side. Again, if you are stuck for space, bend that knee and just try and drop the knee out to the side. You're using your right hand on your right hip to pin that hip down. So now we're stretching all the inside of our hips. Inside of our groin. And just try and breathe through this. We're going to come back in towards the center, bend that knee and let's swap it around to the other side. So with these stretches, we're working passively. So we're using that band on our arms to pull our legs further into a stretch. We're on everything else we're using, our hip flexors to actively pull us into a stretch. So again, straighten that left leg, flat on the mat if you can. You can have a bent, it's a bit more comfortable on your lower back. We're really trying to work on getting that nice deep stretch all down the back. Up that right leg. Keeping that right hip glued to the mat, you can even bring your right hand onto the hip. We're going to cross that leg across our body out towards the left. I'm going to get a stretch on the outside of my right calf and into the right outside of my right hip. On the next exhale, bring that out across to the other side. Left hand onto the left hip, and we're trying to drop that knee out. Again, if you need to, just bend that right knee and try and drop the shin out to the right side. If you can straighten the leg, it does give you a bit of a deeper stretch, but obviously just make sure you've got enough space. We're going to come back now in towards the center, release the band, and we're going to go for a few twists too. So if you're in a seated position, I'm just going to get you to do some revolving easy seated twists and maybe a side bend as well, just to work on the, the outside of the ribs. Everyone else, I'm going to get you to hug your left knee in towards your chest. We're going to drop that left knee out towards the right hand side. We've done this one before. Again, if you need a pillow in underneath that knee, you can. If you want to go deeper into the stretch, you're bending that right leg, the bottom leg, and trying to take your foot with your left hand and roll that left shoulder back. So now we're into a quad stretch on that bottom leg. 
you want to go deeper again, you're going to try and take the left foot with your right hand and straighten that left leg out to the side. Obviously, this is quite a, a deep stretch. If you have that band handy, you can even just loop the band over your, your left foot. But I'm just trying to relax into it. So you're trying to think about rolling those two shoulders back down to the mat. Just try and breathe through this for a second or two. And if you can't lie onto your back, you're going to come into a child's pose now with that lap stretch where your hands are out one side. If you're lying on the mat, you're going to bend that left knee, release the left foot, release the right foot, roll back in towards the centre, give yourself a little bit of a hug again, and then let's straighten the left leg out. Keep the right knee hugged in towards the chest and then let's drop that right knee out towards the side. You want to go deeper, let's bend that left leg and try and take hold of it in the right hand, roll that right shoulder back. And then if you want to go deeper again, you're going to take the outside of your right leg with your left hand and try and straighten that right leg out towards the side. So again, just pick whichever stretch feels good for you and whatever level you're at. Trying to breathe into whatever point of tightness you can find. And then on the next exhale, you can release that right foot, bring the leg back into center, release your left foot. What we're going to do now is just come into a happy baby pose. So you're going to take the outside of your right foot with your right hand, outside of your left foot with your left hand, and just try and keep the tailbone and the back of the head down on the ground. If you can't lie on your back, you're into a wide legged child's pose or into a seated butterfly pose. If you're in happy baby and your head is up off the ground or your tailbone's off the ground, just release the feet and hold on to the shins instead. And just think about relaxing that tailbone down, head down, and let the legs drop out to the side. Just breathing in for a count of four. And then breathing out for a count of six. We're going to do that two to three more times. Taking your last inhale now, breathing in. And then breathing out for six. Just release those legs, you can drop them down to the mat. Feet can be together with the knees out to the side or feet flat on the ground, knees up towards the ceiling. If your feet are together and your knees out to the side, you're just gonna to come to bring those feet on the mat, knees up towards the ceiling, and we're just gonna gently rock side to side. So dropping those knees out towards one side, dropping them out to the other. And then we're just going to roll over onto our side, push ourselves up into a seated position. And then you can slowly come up out of that. We're done. Nice work, guys. Hopefully everyone's hamstrings, your, your hip flexors will be sore. Which is, I know I say that at the end of every class, but it's true. <laughs> um, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. And I will hope you see you next week. <laughs>